Oh, thank you, God, for your presence that is here. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, can we just continue to flow in that vein? God, we thank you for your presence that is here in your glory. God, we worship and adore you. We magnify you and lift you up in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, see, Sister Monique started off with some of those, I guess what we like to call old school songs. I like to call them throne room songs. Because those are the songs that I like to sing that gets me right into his presence. And if it's all right, we're going to continue with that this morning. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Anybody love Jesus today? Anybody thankful for his presence, his name? Thank you, Jesus.
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. God is able to do anything but fail. And we're excited about what God is doing. We're excited about you joining us this morning in the morning manner. Do what we always do. Let's share. Let's tag. Let's make it happen as we get back into our lesson. Talk about the mind. Amen. As we continue that conversation from last week with our elder Sade Felder. Amen. We talk about the things. And again, the key scripture for today is in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 43, 18 uh, and 19. And it says, remember not the former things. That's the 18th verse. Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. It says in the 19th verse, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Again, thank you for joining us. We'll be right back after this. Again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us this morning. Amen and morning manner. Amen. To God be the glory for you, you and you, for sharing with us and being with us this morning. As we said today, we're going to continue and talking about the mind transformation. Transformation. I pray that everyone had a blessed and wonderful weekend. I know I did. It was such a great weekend. It was such a wonderful weekend. Exciting uh, weekend all together. Good morning, Sister Savage. Good morning, Cousin Pam. Good morning. Sister Iranda, Mother Tisdell, all every one of you, the Bodies, thank God for seeing you this morning. Um, it's such a pleasure, it's such a wonderful weekend. Like I said, there was a celebration of Juneteenth uh, this weekend, uh, which is becoming more and more exciting about being understanding, being educated. Also, it was Father's Day weekend, amen. Yes, Father's Day weekend, and it was very great, it was very special. Uh, we had an outstanding service, a lot of work. Uh, all the leaders out on Sunday, a lot of moving parts as, you know, we kind of got back to what we do. Amen. Um, a lot of great things. It was tremendous. We had an outstanding panel of uh, four gentlemen that came and shared. And what was powerful, there was so many things that came out of it that was so powerful. Even though the focus was fathers, amen, I'm quite sure there was many mothers that could uh, relate to some of the things that were being shared. And what we really didn't um, know that took place was the afterglow, the afterglow, the conversations that took place afterwards, the connections that took place, uh, the motivation, the inspiration, the phone calls that took place after that uh, reconciliation and healing. And I mean, I watched it right before my eyes and to God be all the glory for him allowing us to come to our mind to do this, this thing, amen, not being afraid to do what's different, amen, but it was powerful, it was, it was tremendous. And we believe that lives have been permanently changed uh, because of that. As a matter of fact, <laughs> one of the guys came to me and said, can we continue this on a podcast? Can we continue to, you know, the same group? And one even said, can we go on tour with this? I was like, this, whatever could be done. And it was so spontaneous. It was so organic. Um, even though I prepped them with some questions, there were some things that as the spirit of God uh, put in my heart, I asked and I was led as he brought things back to my remembrance. It was so, so tremendously good. So we are thankful to God for that. Where uh, one guy told me, he said, man, this was the best Father's Day ever. He said, it was so exciting. He said, after service, I went to the family cookout. I talked to cousins. There were people that um, found out that he did it. And it was like, oh, my, did you let me know about this when you're doing it again? So to God be the glory for all the things he's doing. And that's we are. We're in the business of reconciliation, restoration to wholeness. Amen. That is what we use. But it's really what we mean when we talk about building the kingdom of God. And even when it comes to you, you and you. We must be about our father's business, amen, always. That's why we join here on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 a.m. to share with you in the holy uh, word of God that it may help you, amen. Because as we're talking about transformation, we talk about the mind, and we again want to thank, um, yes, Brother Palmer, it was an awesome Father's Day. 
awesome Father's Day. Um, we talk about the monitor. We want to again thank our elder, Sade Felder, uh, for joining us last week. She was outstanding. Um, she was informative. She was insightful. And as you can see, she has a lot to offer. And I know there's many of you that's out there as well that have something to offer. Please do not be shy. Do not hold back. Because when we don't, you, you know I'm about communication and conversation. And even as I talk about it, it's something that I continue, uh, even for myself, to make sure I'm having good communication, <clears throat> clear communication and things of that nature. And honest communication um, is so, so important. And we got to be honest. We have to be honest uh, about ourselves and our situations and not get comfortable being comfortable, but pressing and pushing through and growing through some things that God can use you the way he wants to use it. Your family could be blessed. Amen. Because uh, how many of us really are honest enough to say, I need change? I mean, to be honest, enough, I need change. You know, I like myself and there's nothing wrong with who you are, but it's not for you to remain in that, that same position always. But the challenge is that with that admission that we admit that we, admit that we need change is that until we become dissatisfied with where we are, we will never willingly change. We will stay where we are until you realize you need change. And again, we have mastered the art of busyness. We have mastered the art of busyness. We stay busy so we don't have to deal with certain things, but you have to deal with certain things if you're tired of the same things popping up. I mean, honestly, and some of these things, uh, Deacon Gale has been with us so long, been with us so long that we have just accepted them as this is just the way it's going to be. Let me tell you, with God, there's nothing impossible. There's nothing impossible, amen. I don't care how long you've been stuck in that position. God wants to change, but it begins in your mind. Uh, Pastor Moody, it begins in your mind, right? It, when we become dissatisfied with where we are, we will never willingly change. We must hate where we are. I know it's a strong word. My wife tells me all the time, it's a strong word. But it gotta be to that degree where we must hate where we are to get where we need to be. You gotta stop blaming people and, and, and putting it on other people and, and relying on other people to make the change for you. But God wants to make the change in life. It gotta be more than just lip service. You know, you gotta become desperate for something different. Some of y'all not desperate enough. You know, like some people say, you know what, I, I need something to eat. That's one thing, but when I'm hungry, when I'm, when I'm famished, when I'm thirsty, that's what it is. We're thirsty for the wrong things. We hunger after the wrong thing. That's why the Bible tells us when we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we shall be filled. The reason why we're not being filled because you're not hungry enough. Amen. What we do, we like to nibble. We like to use it as a buffet. We pick and choose what we want and then keep the rest to ourselves. One of the things in my prayer time this morning, and you know, Lord, Lord has no respect to time. Now, I guess because he's eternal, he just will wake you up when he get ready to wake you up. And and as as you know, I was in my prayer time. One of the things that came to my heart, and my mind, and it sounds kind of hard, but it's reality, and it's a reality that as a pastor, as a counselor as a, a, a mentor to people is a harsh reality. People want you to minister to them in their sins. They want you to minister to them in their sins, not out of their sins. They don't want you to minister to, to you out of their sins. And when you try to minister them out of their sins, and that's not all cases, but in too many cases, they no longer want to be bothered. They want you to minister to them in their sin. And we can't do that as spiritual leaders when we know better. Amen. We got to look for something different. Amen. So let me let me ask you again. How many honestly can say, I, honest enough, that I, I need to change. I need to change. But the good news is that God desires to bring transformation into our, our lives. And and so let me let me help you with a few of these things. He wants to bring this change in your life. So we're going to talk about three the three key areas. And again, um, what we need to have change at. And these three areas are uh, areas where we claim that to have met Jesus, we, we will see significant changes in our lives, right? We're going to see significant changes in our lives. The, the first area, of course, is in your mind. And that's why our elder Sharp was talking about that last week. And you got the scientific, psychological uh, perspective of it, what ties right into the spirituality. You cannot have one without the other, right? You cannot be all spiritually uh, minded or heavenly minded and no earthly good. And I know it's not scripture, but it is a saying and it's a wise saying. You can, because this all connects together. How do you know it all connects together, Pastor? Because even Jesus, when he did what he had to do, he did not violate any of the laws of the earth. He, he walked through the laws to fulfill the laws and to demonstrate you how it could be done in the spirit. Because we have attempted to do these things in the flesh. And that's really what you try to do. You try to master uh, rules and regulations. 
it's not about rules and regulation. It's about transformation of your mind. It's transformation of perspective of how you see things. It's not until we see things differently where things begin to change. If it keep looking the same, that's why sometimes you got to leave your, your comfort zone. You got to go in areas where you're not comfortable. You got to be around people that makes you feel less than, not because they're putting you down, but you see something that's going on. One again, one of the powerful things that came out of, of, of Sunday was the, the, the fellowship and, and brethren. Listen, y'all, y'all, I don't even know if y'all understand what really took place what really took place. The brothers were so inspired and it was no, it was equal. It was equal across the board, not same situation, not scenarios, but they came there and they gave you more than what I probably could have gave you because it's not about me. It's about their experience. And, and it also helped you as mothers and wives and, and, and things of that nature to understand uh, the males in your life. Some of the things, because uh, these things are universal. They're not just related to men but sometimes how we respond can be different. So when we talk about the mind, the mind, the mind, the first area that we should look and see must be transformation in our mind because we have to change how I process. You have to change how you process. Amen. We all have a filtration system. Y'all know how it is when you take these pictures, you know, on your phone, you take these selfies and you look at it and you, you notice there's a blemish here. You don't like the way your ear look. You don't like the way your chin look, your teeth, not the right tone and all this. And you add filters. Amen. But that filter is not giving a true perspective of what's really taking place. And sometimes we wear blinders and sometimes blinders are necessary when you're trying to focus, but we can't we wear blinders to keep us from blind with knowing what's really going on. So in order to change, we have to we have to change how we process, and we have to change our perspective. Our change our perspective. Again, when Elder Shaw was talking about um, mental health and those things of that nature, and, and trauma and how it affects us, Amen. It, and, and again, a lot of mental issues are caused by trauma. A lot of them are permanent because we have not moved past that. I was at a Gazetta. Uh, conference a couple of years ago, and that's the, uh, the one they have for the whole state of New Jersey. And I remember this gentleman speaking about his son who uh, became addicted to drugs. And 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 I, I may not explain exactly what he did, but I got what he was saying. He said, there are some people that have drug addiction. There are some people that are suffering from trauma and they use drugs to deal with it. I thought that was so powerful. That was so powerful. And they seemed like they wanted the same, but this, he was talking about my personal experience, someone who buried his son from, from overdosing on drugs and how he went through the highs and the lows and the ebbs and the flows of watching his son in and out of rehabs, them trying to help him, bring him in the house, kicking him out the house. And many of us experienced that with some of our relatives, some of our friends, amen. But sometimes how we address it, you know, because sometimes it's they become addicted to drugs from being from recreational, partying and things like that. But then there's some people that, that uh, drug uh, become drug addicted because of mental traumas in their lives. And this is the way they deal with it. Amen. Very, very difficult situation. But one of the things I found out, um, I did a class on first responders, uh, mental health. And one the main thing is when it comes to mental illness is about perception. The reason why we would look at people, we hear what they say, when we have family members, we have friends that are suffering from mental illness, whether we have identified it or whether we have, have they been diagnosed or not, there could be some form of uh, mental illness. To what degree, I don't know, but what one of the main things is perception. It affects how you perceive and how you see things. Those of you who suffer from anxiety, those who, you know, it could be mild, it could be severe, it could be crippling. Right. And what happens in that moment, because even though I'm not one that suffer from it, I've had moments where I'm not feeling high anxiety and it can be over the simplest things. You get overwhelmed. Your mind is tired. So all those things and your mind starts to race. Now it's almost like watching your TV, trying to watch TV as you push and fast forward and you don't know you can't find a pause button. And then a lot of times. And then the key is, how do I get through this thing? How do I ride it through? So we are judge people because of where they are. Whether it is, uh, uh, is, is mental from something that's trauma, something that's, that's a little off, that's why even when it comes to medication, even though I'm not a fan of medication, um, like me and my wife discussed the other day, sometimes to get you where you gotta go, you gotta bring it down a couple of notches. I get it, you can, you can fight through the pain and you got this headache, your arm is sore. Sometimes you gotta take that aspirin to numb that pain to get the treatment that you need. 
So there's some things that God has put in the earth realm. He has put doctors and scientists and these people of this nature. But we must always lean and stand on the word of God. Again, use, use faith, but use wisdom. Use wisdom. Ask God to tell you what to do in these cases. So when we talk about uh, um, these different things, of course, we always, not always, but we go to Romans 12 and 2. And this version, I like it says, and be not fashioned according to this world. Do not be like this world. Do not be fashioned according to this world. But it says, but be ye transformed. Change. Transform means change. Uh, a, a complete transformation. Not a transfer. Not a transfer. Listen to what I'm saying. Not a transfer. Transfer, you go from one place to another place. You change location. You change partners. You change schools. You change churches. You All you did was transfer. You need transformation. You need a transformation. You need a change of the shaping and the perspective of your mind. For example, uh, when you have what's called the stigmatism, stigmatism in your eye. And I had one myself before I had eye surgery. It means that your eye is not shaped the way it should shape. So therefore, your vision is not as clear as that should be. So they have to reshape your eye in order for the vision to become right. So God has to reshape your mind. Amen. So you can see the vision. Uh, again, as the Lord has been dealing with vision, there's something so powerful about vision and the vision carrier. There's something about vision and vision carrier. Uh, again, remember 2020, everybody saying the year vision. Well, that vision was blind vision for a lot of us. We didn't know. But the reality of that and, and all the tragedies of 2020, the difficulties, the uncomfortability, all that we experienced, it really did take vision to get through it. And I think we didn't understand when we said that because we was confusing vision with sight. And I said it from the beginning, 2020 has to do with sight, not vision. It has to do with sight, which you can see. We couldn't see anything in 2020. Nobody could call it. Nobody called it. I think it was one or two prophets they found out of what? 40 million people in this world? Come on, billion? Nobody saw it. But with vision, vision allows you to see beyond what's in front of you. It allows you to see beyond your circumstances. So that's when the enemy starts to mess with your mind. He's trying to affect your vision. But the, again, Romans 12 and 2 says, Be you transformed by renewing of your mind. Why? That you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I, if you want to see what God's will is, I don't know what God's will is, is for my life. If you get your vision together, Amen. Get you, when you get your vision together, you will start to see what God's will is for your life. The second verse says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you just fit in. Now, what is another translate? Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into what without thinking. That's what happens, brothers and sisters. We become so well adjusted. We start to wear it and we get comfortable with it. The Bible tells us to wear this world like a loose garment. Wear this world like a loose garment. I'm in this world but I'm not of this world. It doesn't mean I'm an alien. It means I'm a pilgrim passing through. That means that we allow the customs and the, the culture, and culture is so, so important. Going back to the mind, going back to the mind, when you're dealing with culture, and even when it comes to the ministry and the church building and how we do ministry, we fight for the culture of our church. And what do you mean? I don't mean being black. I don't mean being white. I don't mean Latino. I mean, Asian. that's not the culture. The culture is the atmosphere. It's the attitudes that is the dominant presence of a ministry. And it's so easy for that culture to just overtake us if it's not a healthy culture. If it's a dysfunctional culture, it would overwhelm. That's why I said don't become so well adjusted. Don't get so comfortable comfortable with this world that you just fit in without even thinking about it. That's what we become. We become robots. And, and, and let me say this to some of you, and I don't know who exactly I'm talking to. If sometimes you feel like the oddball, sometimes you feel like I stick out like a sore thumb. Sometimes I don't see it that way. And you feel like you're a little rebellious and it may not be you're rebellious. You just may have a different point of view. And again, whatever we do, Make sure it's honest and glorify God. But I mean, me the one that you would just think. That's why, to be honest, and I know I got some school teachers on here, and I know they agree with me. That's why I like this new math. I don't like this new math. I don't like a lot of t ways they teach kids today. It's not designed to make them think the way they should. And we become less of thinkers and less because we're not thinking, we're not being creators. Amen. And you can recreate your circumstances if your mind is flowing, if you have vision. But again, if my mind is stuck in a certain culture, a certain mindset, amen, that's where it becomes a stronghold and that's where the enemy gets the best of us. So what we have to do, yeah, it's there, it's, it's bad. It's, uh, so we got to understand, let me get this. So instead, we need to fix our attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. 
readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it, unlike the culture around you. Always, this is another interpretation, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings out the best of you, develops well-formed maturity in you, and I believe that if you, we are to be transformed, right? Transformation must begin in the mind. Somebody said that. Transformation must begin in the mind. It doesn't matter where you live, your economic status. It doesn't matter your level of education. It could, these could be factors, but it all starts in your mind because you could be an educated fool. You could be a, you could be a rich person that makes bad mistakes, or bad uh, mistakes all the time. Think about it. When someone suddenly comes into a large amount of money, right? They suddenly come into a large amount of money because they have a certain mindset they still have a poverty mentality. So a lot of that, even when God brings you up and out of some things, and I know I'm challenging you today. I am challenging you today in the name of Jesus to change your mind, to let God change your mind. We're going to stop settling. We're going to stop being overwhelmed. Can I say this? Amen. If you recognize the evil in the world, if you recognize how evil works in the world, it tries to break your spirit. It tries to break your mind. And we talk about brainwashing and things that need. when there's a certain mindset, you do not have to be behind bars. You don't have to be locked up. You don't have to be in what's called the hood. You don't have to be. But if they could, if your mind could be stuck or, or limited where you could go, if there's a lid on your mind, you will not go any further than you're going. We must learn how to think differently than we thought before before we met Jesus. We got to think differently. You got to think differently. And it takes time because the battle, the real battle, the real battle is in your mind. And here's the thing. Some of us, some of us hasn't gotten rid of everything we need to get rid of. There's some, let me be, be just be transparent. I know we don't do a lot of pictures. Now, you know, you used to have photo albums and stuff like that, but you got your phone. You got your phone. You keep your phones there. We keep them in the cloud and all that. You know, there's some pictures you need to delete. There's some thoughts you need to get rid of because they they prompt you. As as uh, Elder Shaw they were saying, there's some things it's stored in the back of your mind, and there're gonna be some things that's known as triggers that's gonna present themselves to you. It could be a conversation, it could be a circumstance, it could be almost anything that would trigger a thought in your mind. When we talked about thoughts and beat and all that, all this ties in together. We just digging down a little bit deeper. We talked about the thoughts and the thoughts are sometimes the hour, but sometimes what forms those thoughts and those processes is your mind. So when Paul tells us in Ephesians 4, he said to be renewed in our mind so that we won't act like we act before we met Jesus. You got to be renewed in your mind before you, before you act Jesus. That is why Jesus himself said that if we all to love God with what? All of our mind. Tell, I, I, I can't rent out no space. I can't rent out any space. I can't rent out any space to anything, anyone, amen, that, that is not pushing me into my purpose, amen. And you got to treat, and I, and I quoted this some years ago, you can't, you got to treat your mind like, like it's, it's luxury. It, like you got to guard your mind, amen. You got to guard your mind because your mind, your thoughts are critical, are crucial to your, your transformation. Wh whatever you hold in your mind, whatever you hold in your mind will tend to occur in your life. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it starts with a thought. And the more you think on it, the more you think, that's why, you know, it's a church saying, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I, I shout hallelujah. My, your mind has a tendency, what you hold in your mind, when you're given space, amen, it occupies, that's right, I don't rent out any space to anyone or anything that's not pushing me toward my purpose. It doesn't mean you're selfish. It does not mean, you know, because here's, the, here's part of your purpose, if you understand your purpose. If you truly understand your purpose, your purpose don't make you snobbish. It makes you loving, a godly purpose. So that means I'd rather deal with Bo, who's trying to get himself together and keep falling off the wagon, than, than Bill, the millionaire, because Bill is not part of my purpose. Now, Bill could be part of my agenda, but not part of my purpose. Oh, let me say that to the crowd on this side. <laughs> Bill may be part of my agenda, but not part of my purpose. Let me, let me grab my hat. Hold on a second. Courtesy, I must elder sit. Nina Knight, my life, his plan. My life, his plan. Maybe my agenda, but it's a part of God's plan. That's what we have to know the difference between. That's why I would deal with people. I would give them room. I would give them time. And I would give them energy because they're part of my purpose, not part of what 
I feel I need to get to come up or do what I need to do. And this is where you're fine. It's like we, we, we deal with people and we don't deal with their character. We deal with what we can get out of it. That's why you have to be very, very careful. That's why I say, look, keep my mind. That's why I said, but keep my mind. Whatever you hold in your mind will tend to occur in your life. If you continue to believe as you've always believed, if you don't change your mind, you will continue to act the way you always act. And if you continue to act the way you've always act, you will continue to get what you've always gotten. Amen. Amen. You will continue to, if you keep acting the way you act, you got to change. See, it starts in your mind and then you, you act out what it is you're thinking, right? You don't just act it out. You don't just act it out. You say it out loud. You say it out loud. You say it out loud. And when you say it out loud, you put it into the atmosphere. You create what? That culture. Again, if we allow the culture of the world and if we're saying what the world is saying on repeat, let me say that it doesn't mean that you, you know, you mute yourself. But if you got it on repeat, that's the same thing what's in your in your CD, what's on your playlist, whatever's in your playlist. You know that one song come out and, and then listen, there's a song that came out. <laughs> and I like this song. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, I like this song. I love music. And then I found out more information about the song. Oh, it changed my whole perspective about the song. I don't even like the song anymore. I don't like the song because, again, we have to be very careful what we feed our mind because you're going to start to act it out and you're going to start to live it out. And if you want different results in your life, listen, if you want different results in your life or, or your work, all you have to do is change your mind. It's that simple. It's that simple, but it's not that simple. I am not the same person I used to be. I'm not the same. I'm the same person I used to be, but I'm not the same person I used to be at the same time. How I think, how I process, how I move is totally different. My only thing is I wish I've gotten this earlier. But I know it was God's timing. It was God's plan. And 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 listen, um, the, the brother on Sunday, man, so, so powerful. It was so powerful. Brother Glorious Shabazz, when he said he did his time. And this is a this is powerful mindset change. He said, I did that time in prison. And when he I decided to go from prison and go to college. Amen. <laughs> he said, I looked at it like I did that bid. If I did that bid, I did, I could do this time to get the man. Come on. You talk about looking at things in a different perspective. And therefore, what happens is the lesson learned in that I have the discipline to do it. One thing I found in my, my personal experience with a lot of people who have served time. And you would think people who serve time have learned to be patient. They, they become very impatient. And I guess because they've been sitting on things for so long and they're, they're racing and they get out, they need this, they have no pain. Could that brother call me back? And, Calm down. But it's a bit, it depends on perspective of how you see things. Again, and that main word we got out of that and first lady can test, I'm see if she remembered, flip it. You got to learn how to flip the situation. Amen. That's why I got, don't just transfer. You, but you got, you got to learn how to flip it. You got to learn how to transform it, right? So God desires to transform our mind in these four answers, of these four areas. And, and now these four areas are these. I want you to write them down. What we think about through our thought life is known as your thought life. What we think about, amen, you got to be careful. You got to, you got to, you got to be careful uh, when, when it comes to that. In, in Matthew 9 and 4, 9 and 4, right? Jesus knew the thoughts of the Pharisees. He knew their thoughts. We think our thought life is off limits to God. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to be careful. You got to be careful about your thought life. And again, there are going to be times where you got to rebuke your own thoughts. You got When those things start to get in your mind and you know where they're going to lead you to. Can I say this? Can I say this? You know, always ask for permission to say something. And that's just to prep your guys to receive it. Even when you write, you got to be careful how you think about it. Let his mind be given us also in Christ Jesus. You know, the old saying about what would Jesus do? You could be absolutely right. And if, you, if, you, if you're thinking about it, if you're thinking about it and praying about it at the same time, you'll kind of fall back a little bit. Even if it catch you off guard, don't always react. You want to respond. But when you react, and this is my own interpretation, you just react out what they just said until you're responding in a godly way. We think our thoughts is off limits. I thought like, no, however, he's constantly walking through our mind and our thoughts, right? It, it, how do you know that, Pastor? You, you just made that. No, I didn't. And Philippians 4 and 8 tells us that. It teaches us that. It, it's what we're supposed to think about. It tells us what we're supposed to He says, finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, 
Whatsoever things are honorable, whatever so things are, are, are pure, whatever things are lovely, right? Right? Whatever these things are of good report, if there be any virtue, amen, if there be any praise, do what? Think on these things. You got to reshape your mind, what you think of, what you focus on. Be careful what you enter to your gates, your eye gates, your ear gates, all of those things, who the company you keeping. And this sounds like your thought life. That's what he's telling us about. What do you think about? What clouds your mind? Are these areas of your thought life that will not fit in the description? Pure, honorable, lovely, good report, all of these things. Even in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5 said, tell us, take responsibility for our thought life. That's what it tells us. It said, but though we walk in the flesh, we do not war a according to the flesh. We do not war according to the flesh. Why? Because our weapons of warfare are not of the flesh, but mighty before God to the casting down of strongholds, casting down what? Imaginations and every high thought that is exalted above the knowledge of God. In other words, these things are trying to override. They're trying to put in the override. They're trying to erase what God is telling you. What you heard on Sunday, you got inspired on Sunday. You got inspired this morning. And as soon as you walk out that door, here comes the devil trying to override. That is our warfare, right? That's our war. We fight in physical, but it's a psychological warfare. If you open, if we open up our eyes, you know, people say, I'm woke. They woke. We conscious nation. We're conscious nation. But you could be woke all day. But if your mind has not changed, and see, people mistake woke. <laughs> with information. People think that woke is Googling some stuff or having a conversation. Woke is when your conscience is in line with God. Amen. And you can't wake up three o'clock in the afternoon and say, I'm woke. No, you got to be wake up early in the morning. And again, these thoughts, they, they exalt themselves over the, the, the knowledge of God and bring, and we must bring every thought, every thought, every thought, again, into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, if you say, I'm a glorify God, I'm a honor God, it's not about you being right. It's not about you being right or, or any. <laughs> well, people are still sleep. <clears throat> they're, they're sleepwalking, John. That's what they're doing. They're really sleepwalking. They really sleep. They're in a subconscious state. They're moving about. They're existing, but they're not living. And this is not any shade on anybody, but this is real talk because the conversation I have, and I'll be honest, um, <laughs> and again, I, I, I try to be fair because I want to understand what people believe and why, and some of why they believe it. And I know there's a couple of sect of people that believe in strongly in the book of what's Deuteronomy 28, and they focus on the 38th verse of it. And if you read that, you're going to find a lot of these out here that's now part of these woke conscious, all these camps, all these things. They base on that. And when you read that, you said, man, come on. They, they, they pull an okie doke on you for real because it's so out of context. It's so out of context. And my thing to them is like, so you skip one through 37, you only focus on 38, but all of this goes together. And if you're gonna imply 38, you gotta imply all of these, and you can't do this to, to create the narrative that you want. And that's only because of your, your mind is where it's stuck at and what you're trying to say is the agenda. I get what you're trying to say, but your approach is totally <laughs> totally different. Yeah, that, that'd be totally different. So we got to bring these thoughts to the obedience of Christ. And again, we're even within the body of Christ. In other words, we must, we must have the ability to control our thought life. How? By the power of God. You can't do this on your own. You can't say, oh man, I almost had it. Oh, I almost had it. Listen, the more you replace those things with the word of God, this doesn't mean you walk around speaking in tongues. It does not mean you walk around shouting, but it's like you start to replace these things. And I'm telling you, you have a good life. You have a better life. Abundance of life is already, it's in your mindset. It's how you think. This is why people read books of successful people. They trying to think like they're thinking. Sometimes they're trying to force it as well. Now you could take on some of the attributes and the habits, but I'm gonna tell you what changes your habits is with your thought life. Your thought life, I'm telling you, if you start to think different, you ask God to not just save my mind, but teach me, God, how to trust you and not to be fearless in certain things. And to the point where it, it doesn't matter. I'll say to my wife sometimes with certain things, not about us, but with certain things that are taking place. I said, you know, I really don't care. And, and when I say that, I don't mean it in a facetious, mean or non-loving way. But I mean in a way that I've learned to trust God in all of these. I've learned to trust God in a lot of things, even when there's a bit of fear, even in my own heart, and I don't understand what's taking place. I'm gonna walk it out, I'm gonna do it, because a lot of things, 
the thought come to my mind because I know I've been connected to God. I know I've been praying. Amen. And even though you may have other things you got to think about, I know I've been walking with God and God gave me an idea. I, I write it out and I start producing and it comes to life. It comes to life. And out of that life, let me tell you something. Oh my God. Who God, speak life over your life. Speak life over your life. <clears throat> no matter what's your situation, your circumstance, be obedient to the voice of God and watch it produce life. Because what took place on Sunday was a thought. That was a simple thought that came to mind. And I said, okay, let me, whatever moves, let me move that. Whatever don't move, I'll leave that alone. There was things I thought could work, didn't work. And you bring everybody in on it and you make it happen. And then what happened? You plant a seed. You know how many seeds was planted on Sunday? You know what I mean? See, all I had to do is be the proctor. All I had to do is be the person to be there. Amen. It's like a good point guard in the game who may never score. He may not, but he set everybody else to be successful. All you have to do is create that atmosphere and you reach so many. And that's what it can start with your mindset. That's really what it's about. Um, it's time for us to get out of our comfort zone. It, it, sometimes with our leadership, uh, it, I'm not, I'm, I'm never going to be hard on you, I, but I got to push you into your purpose. I got to push you into your purpose. And, and excuses don't work for God. Because you know he's able to do it. I'm trying to get you to trust God. I don't want you just in church. Amen. But when we have a thought life that's been generated by the power of God that works in us, we have access to that power. We have access to that power. You may not be able to afford to go to college. You may not be able to afford to go to this conference. But you have access to God. We should always be aware of every idea or imagination in our mind. If it doesn't line up with God's word, we should banish it from our mind. Rebuke it. Bind it in the name of Jesus. Most of our problems in our thought life is due to the material that we place there through our eyes and our ears. What we listen to, what we watch, what we see, who is around. As long as we continue to place questionable material in our mind, we will continue to struggle with our thought life. It's a wonder that we think more like the world than we do about God. The time we, we got to get this thing together. We got to work on this thing. Amen. It is 742. It's 72 degrees already in the morning. Amen. Again, we want to thank you guys for joining us. We will pick this up on Thursday. Amen. We have a couple more main points we want to talk about on this, about our thought life, what we think about, and, and those things of that nature, what we think about ourselves. All of those things can change the, 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 the end goal of your life. I promise you that. I promise you that. And again, I thank you guys for joining us and being with us. Amen. We just want to leave you guys with a final song. I pray that you enjoy our praise and worship in the beginning. Amen. We're going to bring them back one more time because I love Old Testament here on a Tuesday morning. So again, you have a blessed day. And Father, we thank you for this opportunity and this platform that we're able to share your word with so many. And Father, it's your, our desire that you be glorified in whatever we do. God, allow this word to reach those you desire for it to reach. And those who is with us today that heard this word, God, that it challenged them to trust you, believe you, and the transformation of their mind. You're not stuck. You're not less than, but you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. It's only when we believe that God is able to do these things that these things will take place. We thank you, Lord, for these and all things. In Jesus' name, let the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. Have a blessed day on purpose. See you on Tuesday.
blood because it's through your blood that Lord you bridge the gap and restored relationship thank you Jesus church do we know it's no goodness of our own but because he became the sacrifice he was the lamb he is the lamb he is our savior he is everything and God